Is City Arts here? No, okay. Um, Stephanie Nelson. Stephanie, are you here? I am here, yes, thanks. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Messiah, I know is here. Okay, so we're gonna, um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda with necessary? Thank you, and there's a second. Second. Thank you, moved by Walter, seconded by Tina. Um, our okay. minutes, uh, is there a motion to adopt with any necessary corrections? Sure. Moved by Walter, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Tina. Okay, um, we're gonna start with our introductions. Introductions are just what, just what they sound like, introductions. We believe that we are better together it's in arts and culture space, in every space, but particularly in the arts and culture space. The collaborations, the um, sharing of information, resources, and all of that is always helpful for us. So that's why we do a um, introduction. It's um, please make it a quick introduction. Uh, if you're going, if you're with a uh, an organization that is going to be a presenter, we would prefer to know why you're here, like or so, or maybe something about you. Please make it an elevator pitch, like 30 seconds or less, <laughs> you know, one minute if it's really important, but um, try to keep it short because we, we just want to know who's in the room so that if there is a possibility for collaboration and you are not a presenter, you'll, you'll know who's here and they'll know you're here. Fair enough. Um, that's for everybody online as well. Hold on, let me just take this. Stop the sharing. Okay, I'm Tina Lumley. I'm co-chair of Arts and Culture Committee. I've been on the Community Board since 2018. I'm community-minded and I love arts and culture. And I pass to this lovely lady. Pass this up to the next person. For a minute, my mouth. Um, fresh breath. Yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Savannah Bailey. I'm the executive director of the West Park Fund. And my reason for being here this evening was to talk about some strategies possibly for arts in the community. And I'm Ann Strauss. I'm a board member and public art committee member of the Broadway Mall Association. And I'm here together. Okay, we'll introduce myself with a colleague to present on an upcoming um, exhibition along Broadway Malls, which will traverse through your community. Thank you. I'm Kate Waddell. I'm also with the Broadway Mall Association, and I am a relatively new member to all of this, so I'm more observant. Thank you. Oh, me, Carlton Davis. I'm a member of a uh, board member of uh, arts and culture, and co-chair with Walter T. Alexander as uh, senior action committee. Thank you, Walter. Walter T. Alexander. Um, member of this committee as well as co-chair of our senior action committee with Carlton. Uh, and we remind all the folks that are here tonight from an organization to please make sure we have your email address. Tina and I disseminate address and we get the information we get out, we get in, we send out, uh, we get out, we send in. So we want to just keep the lines of communication flowing. So please be sure to make sure we have your email addresses. And phone number would be also nice, but moving right along. Young man. Yes. Okay. Uh, my name is Thomas Walker, and I'm with the uh, Things Against Guns organization. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, very good. <laughs> um, my name is Nicole York. I am uh, the program manager at the Community Initiatives of New York, our TAC program. Um, I love arts. <laughs> yes. I'm Kimar Miller, representative for the TAG Youth, Teach a Generation Teens Against Guns. And just an observer. <laughs> um, Keel. I'm this is my first year on the community board, and I'm a member of this committee. Uh, and I'm the senior in high school. Thank you, Madison. Hi, my name is Madison Ayala. I'm the community associate for Manhattan Community Board Number Nine. So, any uh, administrative stuff you need from the board, I'm in charge. And fabulous one. I'm Juan Bonar, high school uh, teacher. 
uh, uh, Dr. Brando, also lived in the area uh, since 1993. And um, yeah, I love the arts and music, especially jazz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John McGregor. I'm a uh, longtime publishing professional, uh, iterating for over 30 years of mostly publishing. And I'm here to solicit ideas and inputs and really support for a general interest bookstore in Harlem. Thank you. Sir? My name is Messiah Ramkisun. I serve as the Associate Executive Director of Strategic Planning and Community Partnerships for Youth Justice Network. We support 16 to 24 year old Portland Ball youth returning from incarceration. I'm also a poet and hip hop artist, and I look in. Messiah. My name is Jack Powers. I'm the director of community outreach with the Justice Network, founder of a photography nonprofit for young people called Lens on Life Project. Yeah, the privilege to work with the Thank you. My name is Anthony De Jesus. I also work with Messiah and Jack for Youth Justice Network. I'm the arts and recreation director. Thank you, Kazembe. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kazembe Balagoon. I am a uh, guest programmer with the Mazos Documentary Center, which is located on 127th Street and Lance Avenue. Um, here to, I'm here to talk about uh, upcoming film programming and opportunities for young people. Thank you. Carol Brown. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carol Brown, founding member of Harlem Opera Theater. Um, we're in Community Board 9, and we will be giving a uh, tribute to Duke Ellington at the uh, Harlem School of the Arts in um, uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you. Ilana. Hi, Lana Mercado. Um, I've been on the board since 2017. I'm on the this committee and the um, Housing Land Use Committee, and I have a, a background in visual arts. Thank you. You and <laughs> hi. Good evening. You and Chen, uh, executive director of Harlem One Stop. We operate a culture portal, HarlemOneStop.org. We're a community-based art services and destination marketing organization for Upper Manhattan. We also advocate for the advocate for the arts, and we're committed to preserving Harlem's cultural and historic assets while contributing to the era's economic development. I am here tonight to, if the opportunity is there, to talk about. Um, uh, uh, a bill that we are advocating for and to get support um, from uh, this committee and uh, CB9. Also, I might mention the culture portal is free and, and open to the arts and creative commu and, uh, community uh, to list their events directly onto the website. Thank you, Ewan. Stephanie Nelson. Hi, everybody. My name is Stephanie Nelson. I have a, I'm the founding director of Stephanie Nelson Dance Group. We've been uh, located in Morningside Heights since 2005. Um, we are a New York City-based contemporary performance ensemble and also um, a public service-driven and education-focused organization uh, invested in using dance for healing and empowerment. So nice to meet you all. Thank you, Sharon De La Cruz. Hi everyone, I'm Sharon de la Cruz. <clears throat> she, they, artist and, and board member. Thank you, Tidiani. You're on mute. You have to unmute Tidiani. If you're on a computer, you can just push the space bar and hold it down. We'll come back to you, Martin Collins. Good evening, everyone. Martin Collins, Uptown Arts Troll Coordinator at the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance. Dakota Pippins. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Dakota Pippins from uh, Harlem Late Night Jazz. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Good to be here. Barbara Grant. Uh, yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Barbara Adeola, and I represent Black American Dance Heritage. My focus is to bring partner dancing, particularly Lindy Hop, back into the public school systems and any place that will have us, young and old. Thank you. Tidiani. Yeah, good evening. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm Tijani Wan, and part of a member of uh, the USA Mali Charitable Association, UMACA. We focus on um, introducing New Yorkers, especially young New Yorkers, to the West African culture, especially music and dance. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Palmer. Good evening, everybody. My name is Michael Pamba, uh, the executive director of the West Harlem Arts Alliance, an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, with a mission to support the arts and arts and the artists in West Harlem. Thank you. Fab Five Freddy. Hello, hello. I'm a Harlem resident, um, a member of the arts community, and uh, happy to be here listening in. Thanks for coming, neighbor. Absolutely. Happy Bill to and Todd. <laughs> Dylan, we'll come back to you. Vita. Hi, my name is Veda. I'm a first year um, MSW student at Columbia, and I'm just here listening in. Thank you. Fireflies. Note taker Ray. We'll come back to you, Netta Washington. Okay, Xavier Morale, Morales. Uh, good evening. I'm a tag youth ambassador. Uh, that's it. <laughs> um, Shimina Keys. Did I say Hi, that? I'm Shimen. Um, Shimen, oh, every time. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, I'm an editor, deputy editor at the Columbia Spectator, and I'm just here listening. Thank you for being here. Jermique Anderson. Ayana Beckford. Oh, there you go. Yeah, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Renee Anderson. I'm a little expert in the Academy of the Bronx. Uh, I'm a tag. Oh, we can't understand what you're saying. Okay. Ayana Beckford. Imani Williams. Okay, I guess they don't want to say anything. I'm Daria Hardiman. I'm co-chair of Arts and Culture. I've been on the board for about nine years. I am a performing artist by trade, also a, a street photographer with my first um, showing of my uh, photography up at the Dwyer right now. And that is the end of our, is that everybody? I think it is. Uh, uh, Daria, yes. uh, uh, this is uh, Dakota. I'm not sure how to raise my hand, but I probably should have said that uh, Harlem Late Night Jazz is a nonprofit 501c3 whose mission is to preserve music in Harlem. Thank you. Um, so we are moving on. Dakota, are you presenting tonight? You're presenting, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so we need to also add Dakota Pippen. Harlem late night jazz. So we have. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have a flyer for your show? I do not. I do not. But I, I'll, I'll get you one. We're, we're still, um, working on it. I have a few pieces up already, and we're still working on it. Okay. But I will. Um. So announcements. Uh, an announcement that we make every time is who we are and what we do. Uh, the community board, you want to do it? I think there might be more people in the second page. We have a second page. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, no, that's Tiago and Priya from Tag Youth. 
Yeah, Ayana didn't speak when I called on her. Um, Imana, Christy, Imani, Christy, I don't know. Um, I think they're all with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, if anyone, would any of you tag you like to speak? Um, no, that's me. Oh, that's good. Okay. So we are going to move on. Who we are and what we do. Uh, the community board as a whole are here to represent the folks in the community and be your voice and ears and be your advocates. The arts and culture community in particular, we're here to help the artists as much as possible. We're here to circulate information and we're here to do exactly what we're doing now. Let collaborate, let everyone know what other people are doing and get the word out. And hopefully the funding is available to provide that information as well. As expeditiously as possible. That's why please, if you if you're not on our mailing list, please provide your name, your telephone number, your and particularly your email address, and you will you'll be added to our distribution list. Okay. Um and please uh the reason that we do all this, as she was saying, and the reason that we do the introduction is collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Carl's pollination is a wonderful thing, productive thing. Okay, committee reports, artist information. As I said earlier, uh, Tina and I, we disseminate, we, like I said, we acquire, as you'll add to the list, required. So if you're doing a project, if you like something that you would like to even know about, we have a, a rolling list of artists, cultural organizations, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, Tina and I send, uh, we send them out as we get them. So that's a tally. I sent out all together 15, and uh, seven of those were just for things for February. Eight of those are for things that are hard going. So you should have all gotten the people that have, if you aren't on the list, you will, I can add them as, as you would put your name on our email. So let you know what's going on. Please let us know what you're doing because that's how, it's about network, collaborating and network. Are there any of the, the, the ongoing ones that you could, that you could uh, let no, people I see, know I, about? Yeah, the, I just took the tally, but next month I will. Okay, let because, you know what's going on. because the same no people problem. are not here. No problem. And, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and if you if you look on the agenda, there's also the um, the emails of Tina and Walter, who are our um, our subcommittee for artist dissemination. So if you're having an event or anything like that that you'd like to go out to the community, please send it to them. Also send it to our board office so that it can go out to the full community blast. Um, and the information is under A, under committee reports. Uh, B, visual arts ex exhibition project. Um, Sharon, Bela Cruz and I are on the arts. This is what we're trying to organization within the CPI community to provide, well, to donate space. The purpose of the space is to showcase CB9 artists. There are several um, flyers up here. Please get the word out. We found, we have two spaces now. We have two libraries that are going to, we're going to be working with. Um, I'm meeting with Barnard College next week, and we also have a restaurant that is willing to work with us to but we need as much artwork as possible. That's why I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be our ambassadors and spread the word. Can you speak up a little bit? Um, did you hear me? Can you all online hear? Yes. No. Yes. 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 Okay. Some can and some cannot. Okay, good. Uh, all right. The strategic planning committee was there meeting. Come on. Come on. 
strategic plan. I was not at strategic planning. There was no committee. It was canceled this month. It, it was, was canceled. No, it was, it was oh. no meeting this month. <laughs> strategic planning. I think that was a. Uh, okay. If it didn't happen, we're going to move on. Oh. Okay. Uh, West Harlem Arts Alliance. Michael, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Did you give? Uh, do you have anything new to report? Well, a, a, a couple of, uh, as they say in the Sopranos, a couple of three things. Uh, we, we are we, we are going to launch our website. Uh, we, we were supposed to launch today, but there's always technical difficulties. So please watch out for our website, our new website, whaanyc.org. <clears throat> It'll feature a couple of, uh, uh, of interesting uh, uh, pages on it. Uh, one is a uh, calendar of events, uh, probably very similar to that of Harlem One Stop. Um, and uh, it'll feature our events as well as local events here in West Harlem. And our A list, or what we call our artist list. This is going to be an artist directory where anybody looking for art services can uh, scroll through the very different art discipline categories uh, for anyone who may want to employ them. Uh, I would encourage all artists in West Harlem to get on the A list uh, so that you are out there and hopefully get employed. Uh, we are conducting an artist workshop, grant writing workshop, this March 20th, Wednesday, March 20th. I'll put the information in the chat here in a second. Uh, this is in anticipation of the CBG grant uh, by West Harlem Development Corporation. Um, we will have another uh, wor workshop in April and then another in May, uh, uh, the one in uh, April will be for small arts organizations, and the one in May will be uh, directed specifically to artists so that they can uh, learn how to better write about their works and how to write artistic statements when they make proposals for, for gallery ex exhibitions and so on and so forth. Uh, these uh, workshops are going to be offered in conjunction with the Nor Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, and they are going to include a special feature of a mixer with each workshop so that uh, all the attendees, registered attendees uh, to the workshops will also have uh, some food and wine afterwards and they will be able to mingle on the topics uh, with other uh, attendees and with uh, facilitators and, and the workshop uh, teachers. And they will be able to sort of uh, mix and mingle and on the sort of various themes discussed on, in the workshop. Uh, so again, uh, the first of the three coming up will be March 20th, and it will be at the Rio 3 Gallery of Broadway Housing Communities. And the mix and mingle will be at Sion Cafe, the wonderful Sion Cafe on Thank St. You. Nicholas Avenue. Thank you, Michael. Michael, will you have a soft copy of the March 20th um, information available to, to disseminate? Or... Yes, yes. Uh, they, uh, Noma is working on the registration link right now as we speak. Uh, everything else is done. All my Canva collateral material is done, you know, fancy, fancy, fancy uh, graphic design and everything. And as soon as I'm waiting, I get the link, I will be pushing out uh, flyers as well as IG posts, uh, Facebook posts, and also uh, an e-blast is coming Friday for it, as well as uh, announcing other wonderful things that are happening, not only at WHAA, but in West Harlem. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. I'm, I'll put some information about the first workshop at Mix and Mingle in uh, the chat room or in the chat okay. section. Okay. Speaking of the chat, would everyone who's online please put your name, organization, and contact in the chat, please? And thank you. Um, the next one is Harlem, uh, the update for Harlem Arts Alliance. Harlem Arts Alliance. Um, will be having its next meeting, a town hall meeting at Riverbank State Park on Saturday, March 16th. Everyone is invited, it's from four to 6 p.m. 
Uh, the last one was actually the first one since they've, um, the first open meeting since they've been back. Uh, there were almost 200 people there. The tag youth showed up and showed out. Um, where it was multi-generational. There were every people literally from teens to 80 years old there and all kind of organizations um, represented there. So a good place to mix and mingle um, as well. Uh, there were performances, there was all kinds of things going on. So if you don't know about Harlem Arts Alliance, it is a wealth of um, collaboration and resources. So uh, please join if you can, March the 16th, 4, 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, now we are moving on to our, oh, I did want to add this, and this is a, just a, a report, just um, the borough president had his state of the uh, borough address yesterday, and I was in attendance, some people in this room were in attendance as well. Uh, I, was, I was so proud that the out there were three performances, two during the main and then one to follow up. The two main performances were artists that are grantees from WHDC who also serve West Harlem. And it was the um, Jazz Power Initiative and the Dance for Variable Population. And they were both wonderful, beautiful performances. And I just wanted to brag a little bit on them. <laughs> um, on to community updates. And we only have one tonight, and that is our fabulous Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, uh, Martin Collins. Uh, welcome, pleasure to join you all tonight. Uh, we are in the process of uh, the Uptown Art Stroll Poster Contest, the annual poster contest, and we will be giving away $2,750 in prize money next month. The submission deadline is April 1st for the poster contest, which is open to artists residing from West 125th Street North. The grand prize is $1,500, second place $750, and third prize is $500. You can submit on the website at nomanyc.org, and we invite you all to the opening reception for the 22nd of 10 Art Stroll, which will take place on Friday, May 31st at the United Palace. The stroll, of course, will continue throughout the entire month of June in West Harlem, Washington Heights, and Inwood. We invite you all next week to the 15th annual Women in the Heights exhibition opening, Thursday, March 14th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at Noma's Gallery on Broadway and 176th Street. 43 Uptown artists are in the show. And uh, we thank Michael Palma and the West Harlem Arts Alliance. I will not repeat what he said, but we're very happy to collaborate with him on uh, the Learn, Mix, and Mingle, which will be coming up on Wednesday, March 20th. And artists in both Community Board 9 and 12 are invited to submit for our show, which will open the same night the Art Stroll opens on Friday, May 31st. The uh, show is entitled Uptown Treasures, and that exhibit will open here in Noma's Gallery on the ground floor, Broadway and 176th Street, Friday, May 31st. And you can see Noma's website for details. And finally, Noma has four studios that are priced with artists in mind. You can see the pricing and the uh, studios uh, here uh, at Noma uh, on our website, nomanyc.org. Please see the website for uh, that and much more information. Thank you all. Thank you, Martin. Were there any questions? Okay, moving on to our presentation. Um, let me, we have several that will be added um, as we have already discussed. Just, um, just a note that if you are presenting, you must be, you must have your camera on. Uh, if you are on this committee, you must have your camera on. Um, okay, and our first one is Blackberry Productions. Is Stephanie Berry here? I'm sorry? Are you Did they you send presenting? you to present for them? No. no. Okay, oh, no, they're presenting tonight. Right. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, are you here? Okay, um, our next presentation will be West Harlem Art Fund, Savannah Bailey McLean. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. I, I wasn't planning to do a presentation. I was planning really to have a discussion okay. about um, uh, the art ecosystem in New York City because I don't believe a lot of people are very familiar with the ecosystem and how uh, West Harlem could actually tap into it and benefit from that ecosystem. So um, a lot of people are not aware of the fact that really um, when artists graduate from graduate school, if they go to graduate school, because not everyone does, some are self-taught artists, um, they usually start working with other artists or small arts organizations. And that's just to get their feet wet, try to exhibit, let people kind of introduce themselves. And uh, that's how it kind of began. What you're hoping is that you do enough of those small exhibitions that maybe a small gallery might be interested in. So that's the next step. It's really to get gallery representation. New York City, you know, has tens of thousands of artists who have never gotten any gallery representation because oftentimes artists do not know how to approach a gallery. They have to prepare. You have to have a portfolio. You have to have a bio, an artist statement, you know, samples of your works prepared at all times. So therefore, you can catch the attention of a small gallery or a curator. And then hopefully... You get enough of those exhibitions where a bigger gallery might pick you up, and that's where you really want to go. Get an established gallery to pick you up because they will introduce you to curators. They will introduce you to collectors and to museums. And that's really the projection that people need to move towards. But unfortunately, a lot of visual artists are not aware of it. New York City has a problem. There are very few artist studios in New York City. That is a huge problem. The city has allowed the real estate community to gobble up every available space. There used to be galleries along most of New York City waterways because people need not just space, but fire or kilns or other types of equipment that makes a lot of noise. And unfortunately, we only have a few pockets left in New York City. So one of the things that New Yorkers need to do is start advocating to their electeds about trying to provide artist studios that are affordable. And then New York City also, um, when it comes to uh, galleries, we have a few art districts, the number one gallery districts in the United States. So that's Chelsea with over 200 galleries. Then you have the Lower East Side, over 100 galleries. You have Soho that also, Tribeca is stealing everyone from the Lower East Side. These are the galleries that are going towards uh, Tribeca. Brooklyn has lost quite a few. Again, because of real estate. Williamsburg does not really have galleries anymore. Greenpoint has bought what few they had. You have um, a few others in warehouses along the L line, but it's just few and far in between. Queens has struggled for years. They don't have an uh, arts district. It's just MoMA PS1 with a few galleries, but they have more artist studios in Long Island City, but they're holding on by a thread. Staten Island has been devastated. They really cannot seem to get on their feet. The Bronx has some possibilities. They still have a couple of warehouse districts near the, um, the Bronx, um, really, um, I'm saying the Bronx, Bronx, Bronx Express, no, um, the other express way I'm forgetting now, not a Bronx girl. But there's just only a few. So these are the things that we have to pay attention. Unfortunately, also, he's no longer in city council. Jimmy Van Bramer pushed, and I understood what he was trying to do. He pushed so that monies could be distributed to all five boroughs. But what he did was he siloed each of the boroughs and discouraged cross-county collaboration. So if you are a Bronx artist who may want to work with a Queens artist and try to get funding, most of the time you can't get the funding because each borough is saying we only want to focus on the artists in our borough and we only want to give to them if they live here. But that's not how art works. 
you need collaboration and inspiration. Maybe this board might want to be innovative to encourage both artists that live here, but also encourage collaboration with other artists that may want to present here. And then this way you bring about more diversity, more excitement, and you can bring about a healthy ecosystem right here. So these are the things I wanted to talk about. I gave to the two chairs, the 2023 part of it, the survey, global survey about the arts, who's collecting, how they're going about it, just the index, because the whole report is 146 pages. And so therefore you can get it online and therefore you can see who's collecting why. Most of the same artists are being collected globally. You're not gonna get new artists unless you start cultivating artists to really expand their practice and kind of push it forward. If you're not doing it and you're just siloing people, they're not gonna grow. Galleries are not gonna pick them up. Curators are not gonna be interested. You've got to be a little bit more innovative and progressive in order to make a dent in the art world. So what are your ideas for that? I just shared. One is that you might want to, instead of like some of the other communities saying, we only want those who just live here. Don't be that now, Mike. Encourage both those who live and those who wish to collaborate with artists who live in that community. Therefore, you get more pollination that's going on. Because if you limit yourself that way, you're not going to grow. I've never done that. My group has been around 26 years. People laughed at me. They don't laugh at me anymore. I'm open to all people. I have curated all kinds of people, never just Black and Latino. I've done Asian artists. In fact, I'm doing my second show for an AHL Foundation. They asked me to curate for them because I've curated Asian artists before. The show was a hit last year. They asked me to come back to curate again. You've got to be willing to work with different groups of people, and it's all about the narrative. That's the new word, narratives. You just don't do it because you feel like it, because you just love it. What is your real story? What is your real motivation? Are you doing research? Why do you want people to pay attention? That's what people are really interested in today. Can you take some questions? Yes. One. So uh, two issues. I understand that uh, we had, um, well, one of my really good friends uh, in the Melbourne line, he's an amazing uh, trumpet player. I love him. He, he when, when you close your eyes, it's like Miles Davis is playing in front of you. And he moved to Brooklyn, and it's very hard to get in gigs here in Harlem. And he, he lives, I mean, he developed his, uh, his trade here in Harlem. He used to play at right above River Bank. He used to see him on Saturdays, pre-COVID, right? Pre-COVID change and everything. But the other problem we have is that uh, artists that are in Harlem, if we don't hold that money for them, then they go somewhere else and then they lose it. Right? I wanted to answer that. I forgot to mention something. Savannah, could you move forward a oh. little bit just so they can see you? Oh, okay. Um, you okay. guys were offered an opportunity with Columbia University. I used to be on this board. I was the first chair for arts and culture with Michael Palmer. Uh, I've chaired three committees on the board. Columbia has its issues, but they offered you Floridita. Y'all should take that deal. Because I knew in advance that Floridita was going to go out of business. Columbia told me that. They told me in advance. They told me to lay off it was a lawsuit. It was ugly. Yeah. Nonetheless, if you take the Floridita space, now you can use it. You have dinner theater, poetry reading, all different types of uh, performances. You can sell tickets. You dinosaur. Have them cater for you. Therefore, you make money. When you make the money, you got money to offer your visual artists supplies, spaces. Use them because the kitchen is still good. The bar is still good. You can have wine tastings. You can have food tasting. You can do all kinds of things. They offered you a chance to make money. So therefore, you can take care of yourself and be independent. That's what I was to suggest because your friend was talking about venues. 
We don't got them up here. Mm. We don't have venues. We've lost most of our venues. St. Nick's Pub, gone. Okay? We don't have that no more. Half the restaurants are gone across New York City because of COVID. You have to now create it. Call it a pop-up. You call it a pop-up. You market it that way. Guess what? People are going to rush because they know it's temporary. You add the buzz. You add the excitement. You can cut the time, go somewhere else, and people will follow you. It's how you add the sizzle to what you're trying to do. That's what your friend needs us to do that. Um, Linux, uh, Linux Lounge also closed and uh, Paris Blues just recently also closed. Uh, these are venues that uh, took decades to create a name and they are so, they were so vivid. Like if you wanted to hear jazz and make talk was the thought and then it burned down, but then we don't replace those thoughts. And we don't, when we don't replace, replace those thoughts then we lose them forever. Generations of people play music that if you don't have them anymore, it's kind of like it dies. You know that music dies. Never mind. Uh, 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 oh, it uh, dies. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Going back to you. Going back to you. What you were saying. How do we bring those back? Pop ups. Dakota. Uh, yeah. Dakota. I'm sorry to interrupt. This is Dakota. I um am. Oh, good. What happened here? Go ahead. We hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I, I clicked a button or something. I can't see you guys, but let me speak. Our organization, uh, Harlem Late Night Jazz, was founded eight years ago to uh, deal with the issue that you're talking about. In fact, specifically, it was the closure of St. Nick's Pub. Uh, over that time, we booked like over a thousand musician gigs. And we are attempting to address that issue that you're raising right now. Uh, I, I don't want to speak out of turn here because I have a presentation, uh, uh, but we've been in 18 Harlem venues uh, over that period of time. Uh, we're about to have what we're calling a Harlem Jazz Club revival in April that I was going to announce to the club uh, last year. Uh, we expect 15 Harlem venues, uh, over 60 events, over a 10-day period, and over 100 artists involved. Uh, many of them are Harlem artists. Uh, we also have a calendar that runs Dakota, uh, six or into, seven... Dakota, don't oh, get yeah, into I'm your... sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't uh, don't yeah, get yeah. into it yet. We want to hear your whole presentation. Yeah, yeah, not, when that's it, a lot. When but, it's your turn. Yeah, but, but to your let point... Let me just close it out. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, let me just close it out and say, of course. yes, that's a serious problem that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're working on that. And uh, I'm glad you raised that issue. Thank so you, Dakota. And that, is, that is a thing that we talk about all the time. And I, I encourage you all to connect as well. Walter? Yeah. Walter? I, I thank I'm you for, for the big speech. It's so, well, it's so important. To diversify. Not only is Harlem diversifying, the city is diversifying. Amsterdam on 40, 49th Street, up the street for me, there was an art gallery there. They stayed open for about a year. They had a mm. few exhibitions in there, and then poof, they're gone. And now it's a, another farm, 15 minute pharmacy. Okay. Mm. I'm curious as to because you've been around for a while, but you added that. Mm -hmm. Is it a political situation though? Is it because cultural affairs is supposed to be doing a lot of this stuff? Do you have problems if this different administrations giving you a hard time? Because it's, there seems to be money there. Short, but now for and more story and sweet. They don't we, give money for that. We, we, we there's a theater on 146 in Broadway. I'm sure you know about it. It's been vacant forever, forever. Um, we were taking it up as a project to try to reopen it as they did in Brooklyn, as they did in the Bronx, okay? So the person who, who did that is no longer with the project. Um, a few of us are talking about trying to reactivate that because there's space there. And there's a law, it's down the road. But I'm, I'm just saying it might be a political thing, but because you're absolutely right. We have to get back. Art is what makes, makes us human. 
That's what separates us from the rest of the living things on the planet because we express ourselves as we are. So it's very important that we, you know, I'll just debate, I'm going to stay in touch with you to see what you're doing and so hopefully I can add you to this thing with puts this thing into this. It is so important. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And I would love, um, you know, Michael Palmer, of course. Um, you know, we're, that's a, a conversation for the board and for West Harlem Arts Alliance in terms but of the. I'm the just trying to say, Chelsea has 200 galleries. It's the volume. Just because you've got one initiative over there and one initiative there, that's not going to solve your problem. They have 200 independent galleries. Soho has over 100. Tribeca has about 100. Lower East Side has about 100. Upper East Side, about 100. So you're saying the pop-ups? No, what start? I'm saying is that these neighborhoods have volume. One or two ain't going to do it for you. Because you got to start somewhere. No, but what I'm trying to say is you can't just put all of that burden on one group. One group cannot do that. You need so a volume. How do you go in on the volume? Talk to landlords. Bring them in here. Start negotiating. Ask what spaces do you got available? Can we do it temporary? Six months, three months. Bring a buzz. If you can't get it long term, say you help them to bring a buzz because they want the increase in their property value. You partner to say you're going to help them increase that property value, then they start to become friendly with you. I did an installation for the Mink building. I was asked to do it for Armory because Studio Museum refused to do it. I had no money, went to two artists. I said, okay, first come, first serve. Diane Smith, Central Harlem artist. We've been friends for years. She did the installation. I named it Gumboot Juba. It was astounding. We got on New York One the next day. New York One said, Stephanie uh, was there. She said she was pregnant. She's dropping the baby. But she said, Savannah, there'll be a camera there for you. You also have to have quality. You just can't do something because you want it. If the quality isn't there, then nobody's going to check it out. Find who are your curators in this community. Get them to help so that they can do portfolio reviews. Start telling artists you need to improve the artwork you are presenting. Crack the whip a little bit, and you'll see some improvement. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And yeah. So we have Go ahead. <laughs> I, I encourage, I, we're probably going to say the same thing. I and Please stay in touch with us. Please come. Don't stay away. You've been away too long. Please, <laughs> please come. This we, needs to be a, a committee on it of its own, a subcommittee of its own. Just a meeting. And you I know, know there needs to be something on a continuum. Right. Well, but if you just heard a few minutes ago, we do have a visual artist exhibition project, which we have started before the pandemic. And our illustrious honorable Tina Lumley has revived it and she has got and new ideas. She's been doing all of those things. She's been reaching out to Columbia and she's been turning over every rock to try and find places in uh, places where artists can display their their art. And well, we do have Broadway Art uh, Broadway Mall Association in the mm -hmm. in the house. So you know, we have resources. We're, we're better together. <laughs> we're better together. But we have a jam-packed, thank you so thank much. You. We have a jam-packed, um, I think we are going to move on. City that was, that we could stay there all night, yeah. though. Is City Arts <laughs> available? Um, City Arts, yeah, in a matter of fact. Keith? Is City Arts here? All right, tag, you're it. Good evening, everybody. Good um, evening. I would stand up, but it seems like this is the best vantage point. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> yes, to be able to see. Yeah. Okay, hello. Um, my name is Nicole York. I'm the program manager at uh, TJ. It's our umbrella is the Community Initiatives of New York, um, but our program specifically for youth is the Teaching a Generation program, which I have some of my lovely imposters here, and we've got some on there. Um, we were here, uh, we were really grateful for the support that we got um, in West Harlem for the event that we had last week. Uh, we had Matthew Knowles um, and speak to about 500 uh, school kids um, on a field trip, um, and they got to talk about the power of music, about um, how they can uh, propel their own artist journeys forward. Um, and we want to keep collaborating with different artist organizations in the community 
Um, uh, we have a really great connections and resources, um, and we are trying to connect those with um, the kids and the artists that we work with. And they they have such great uh, potential, um, and and they do great work. And so um, we're here. If you have any uh, youth ages fourteen to twenty four, uh, we meet every Thursday for conversation, um, and uh, we would love to create and to collaborate. If you have, if your young, lovely, wonderful people have art, visual art that they would like yes. to enter into, possibly be um, available to showcase their art, okay. pick up one of those flyers over there, Got it. and there's a QR code, submit your, have your submission, and um, hopefully you'll be in it. Yes, so and we have, we do have some of our flyers over there. Great. Did anybody have any questions for Tag you? Um, I was yeah. It was just good to see so many. And the folks, the young kids, the young folks, yeah. asked very good point there, that yeah. he addressed as just was the young lady was saying. Oh, you know? so yeah. I, I really like what you all are doing. I, I mean, your thing just presented us last time, and then also at uh, Riverbank, mm -hmm. we into. So I, I really think you're really a progressive. It's good to see. We don't see many good things that young folks are doing, <laughs> and they're doing some positive progressive things and, and they were out in droves yes yeah, they, they, they were they represented i was impressed a nice crowd of folks and they were admirable good questions <laughs> thank you. any thank other you. questions uh, yeah, oh, Talon, I have a question. Sorry, it's kind of hard for me to hear, and I apologize. Um, it's probably it's probably on my end, but um, just two questions, and I'm I'm sorry if if you said it and I couldn't hear. Uh, where are you located, and um, are are these um, are these pro uh, programs free? Thank you. Yes, um, all of our programming is free. Um, we our office is in Central Harlem on One Thirty Fifth and out of Clayton Powell. Um, but we work in we work in twenty five schools across the school district, and all of our events we invite um, across the New York City public schools. So the last event that we did last week was at the Forum um, at Columbia. Um, we also like up here we work in um, Urban Assembly for the Performing Arts. Um, we work with some of those kids. Um, so that's kind of our West Harlem connection, but we're, we reach out to all, all boroughs. We're trying to get to Santa. We'll get there. <laughs> Thank you. Meetings on Thursday, what address is that? Um, Thursdays um, from 4.30 to 6 at Salem United Methodist Church. Um, we always announce what we're doing. Um, it's on 129th and Adam Clayton Hall. But all of our announcements, um, all of the things that we do are always on our Instagram at T-C-I-O-N-Y. Um, and that's how you can keep updated. All of our events, again, are free. Um, and we love to offer as many resources as we can to <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, now we're moving on to- Get a question, to sir. Get a question, please, no, sir. Uh, we're moving on to uh, Maisel Documentary Center, Kazembe Balang Balangun. Kazembe Balangun, it's so wonderful Balang. to be here. Thank you so much, my dear sister. Uh, my name is Kazembe Balagoon. First of all, this is my first meeting at CB9. Um, I feel very welcomed, and um, this is a very lively meeting. It's also a very honor. I am a native son of Harlem on Street Street Street, 8th Avenue, Polo Grounds Housing Projects. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Mazel Documentary Center was founded by the legendary documentary Albert Mazels in 2005. Um, to provide low cost and no cost training in documentary filmmaking to the Harlem community. Um, in 2008, we expanded to a micro cinema uh, that has about, has about 50 seats, where we currently uh, show uh, world class documentar docu docu documentaries. Um, and we're the only art house uh, north of Lincoln Center dedicated to art house documentaries. Um, documentaries. Um, we are located on 343 Lenox Avenue. Um, and uh, we are, uh, most of our programs are including the cinema and uh, our teen docs program. Um, and also our community based programs are free and to low cost. Um, the reason I am here today is because um, we actually have a, new, a couple of new series that are on the agenda. Um, one is, um, 
looking um this is the series that I am programming is called the Lafarge Clinic Remixed, which is looking at the history of the first mental health clinic that was opened up in Harlem called the Paul Lafarge Clinic that was housed in St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Harlem that was primarily founded by the author Richard Wright and uh, a, a Jewish American psycho, um, psychoanalysis um, named Frederick Warham. Um, they founded the clinic in hopes of providing, uh, uh, my, uh, at that time, uh, African-Americans, mostly poor, uh, mental health services in the community. Um, the reason I started this series is because I wanted to look at the history of mental health in, in, in our community, but also to remove a lot of the stigma around talking about mental health. So um, the series that we have is um, a group of films that deal with not only the, the history of the Forest Clinic, but some of the people who are involved in it. Um, we had, we, it's already started. Um, we did a screening of Richard Wright's Native Son, um, as well as a documentary on the uh, anti-colonial psychiatrist Franz Fanon called Black Skin's White Mask. Um, and we also had an um, a, a, a evening of films on uh, organizing in Harlem called What's Happening in Harlem. Um, on March 7th, we'll be showing a very classic film called The Quiet One, which actually was uh, filmed in Harlem. Um, it was uh, nominated for the 1948 uh, uh, Academy Award for Best Documentary. And on March, uh, March 14th, uh, we'll be showing a classic film called The Harlem, the Harlem, the Harlem School, which is a documentary of, about a Harlem classroom in the 1970s. Um, I'm going to drop a text and a link, but if you want more information about Maisel Cinema, you can check our website out, M-A-Y-S-L-E-S dot O-R-G. Um, we're also on Instagram, Maisel's Documentary Center, um, at, um, at Maisel's Documentary Center. Um, and it would be great to see you all at the, uh, at the theater sometime. Like I said, um, uh, we, uh, we certainly believe in, um, uh, um, you know, not just folks coming in as dinner goers, but leaving as citizens. And um, we want to continue to help be a venue to uh, strengthen the Harlem community. So it was an honor to be here tonight. And thank you so much. Thank you for thank your you. presentation. Did anyone and have any questions? And if you have soft copies of your upcoming films, please send it to Walter and I, and we'll disseminate it to our community. Absolutely. This thank you so much. I'm going to drop a link questions. for the um, series in the chat too, okay? Questions for Maisel? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, and I, I think I neglected to say, because we are so full today, we're asking that you, and this is not you to come back, <laughs> uh, but we're asking that you please keep your um, presentations to seven minutes. Seven minutes, please. Um, we're moving on to Broadway Mall Association. Uh, just to, uh, I'm Kate Waddell, and uh, just to refresh everybody's mind about the Broadway Mall Association, we're a nonprofit organization founded in 1980, and we're the stewards of the green medians that run uh, on Broadway from 70th Street to 168th Street. In a way, it's sort of the longest park in New York City, with a particular focus on horticulture. Uh, we took, uh, we work in partnership with New York City Parks. Uh, we also like malls during the dark winter months. And what brings us here today is uh, the BMA's Art on the Malls program. Mm -hmm. We we program the malls with public art, presenting a series of outdoor hey, sculptures. Do you want spaghetti for dinner? Yeah. Okay, let me heat that up for you, okay? Please put yourself on mute. All right. Um, uh, we program the malls with public art and uh, we try to have a uh, annual show of public art um, whenever it's possible. Uh, we've been doing this since uh, 2005 when the program began. Uh, we are two members of a five member public art community and, and it's been a five member show. Thanks, thanks Kate. Uh, so we're here to uh, inform everyone about uh, the upcoming art exhibition 
Oh, she's entitled uh, Sean Scully uh, Broadway Shovel, and it's opening in mid July and will run um, some six to eight months into um, 2025. And it's our uh, the BMA's 14th uh, public art exhibition in our series, which the state mentioned was initiated in 2005. And it's organized by the BMA, presented by the BMA, um, partnership with uh, NYC Parks, uh, their Art of the Parks program. And then it receives lists and gallery, which is the Chelsea Gallery. Uh, there will be seven sculptures comprising the, the target exhibition. We have the locations from Lincoln Square slash Dante Park, 64th Street, um, all the way up to uh, uh, Washington Heights. And uh, one of the film pieces will be uh, cited within uh, CD9's uh, book that we'll, we'll get to shortly. Um, John Scully is an Irish born American artist of great distinction and he's one of the most important um, artists of his generation. Um, he has uh, been based here since 1975, while well, he's currently taking a sort of four year hiatus uh, to London, where he grew up, grew up in South London, he's Irish born, but he's American, and um, that he's coming, traveling back and forth. Um, um, to be with us. And uh, while this exhibition is going on, being in the art world, we like to display visuals. This is, this is our artist. This is this is the portrait of Sean. This. And uh, he is internationally renowned, um, arguably the world's living, uh, leading abstract artist and in, in collections. Uh, public and private, uh, worldwide, and, and has exhibited worldwide. He is uh, predominantly known for his paintings, these large scale, industrial, um, abstract, composed of vertical and horizontal bands, and blocks, and ribs, and geometric forms, and is an extraordinary colorist. Um, his works in, uh, in New York are in. Um, MoMA, Guggenheim, and the Met, um, et cetera. Um, and over his five decade long career, he's produced an impressive body of work with um, several thousand paintings and works on paper, um, prints, and photographs. But we're here to talk about sculpture because, although here are some examples of this, the little paintings, if you want to hold these up. But um, Do you know to... which one will be in our district? Yes, yes. coming up right now. Yes, it is this 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 sculpture from uh, 2018. In in the exhibition, there are seven sculptures. Two are being fabricated uh, for this project, and five are existing. This is one of the existing uh, pieces, and uh, this this is. Um, Made of aluminum and automotive parts, and he has it's um, sorry, automotive paint, and it's being sited at um, 117th Street of the, the crosswalk there between the wall, the crosswalk between Columbia and um, Barnard. Uh, and he has worked with outdoors and a variety of materials, and glass, and also works with videos. And again, this is the sculpture that features his uh, distinctive style and language. Um, and this sculpture is going to be cited there um, in honor of the great and late American art critic and writer and philosopher Arthur Danto, who had a long association with um, with uh, Columbia. And then if you're interested in knowing what the other sculptures that will comprise the exhibition, there is this large scale work that's being fabricated for Lincoln. The Dante Park site, and then in wood, these these are made out of railway sleepers, 
And so it's in dialogue with the there will the on. contracts mm -hmm. that, that uh, run over. This is more subtle. Sometimes they're extremely colorful and bold and attention getting. And in this case, um, at 79th Street, uh, more, more subtle. Another one is she. Can you take some questions? Yes, of course. Um, I, I have two. Yes. Um, how do you choose your artists and how um, would one be able to get involved with the Broadway Model Association? You want to take that thing or do you want me? I'm going to Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, we um, we have a large network. We, we work with artists uh, approach us, people who uh, are interested in visiting uh, and go on our, our website and our distinctive uh, set of guidelines there about how one goes about this and uh, um, could collaborate with us, could, could work with us and together with the Parks Department. Um, and what was your second question? How do was does one get involved in terms of not as an artist, but how do you are? Is there a board or how do you get a board? Yes. yes, we have a we have a board. There's a board um, of directors, and then we also have a public art committee, and there are currently uh, five five members. Of us. She's asking, how do you become a member? How do you become a part of the committee? express an interest and um, then the dialogue happens with the, the board. Okay. And how many on the board? On the board right now there are about I think maybe 16 or so of us on the on the board at large. Mm -hmm. And then the um <clears throat> many members are made up of board members with one exception a former board member yeah. who now is no right. longer a board member. And are you a nonprofit? Were you yes. just a, yes. a, a nonprofit that was interested and then you began this sort of our okay. yes, our, our chief responsibility is is being the stewards of and maintaining the mall. So supporting culture. But so you're like friends of the malls, the Broadway mall. That's how it kind of started. Yes. In yes. in a way. Okay. Are you associated with this is Art Gallery on 96th Street in the middle of the? Are you, is that part of the organization? No, it's not. That was just never one to stand, and it's no longer. It was kind of a electronic coalition of the arts, and they had a sort of a, a temporary presence there, and they would. They were there for years. Yeah. Well, I mean, as our by temporary, I meant. They would have exhibitions and, and they would have temporary exhibitions. Yes. But they um they are no longer in existence. The space is not utilized anymore. Well, it's the parks department. Okay. And, and the building needs like substantial. Uh, but they are actually Juan, you had a question. Well, oh, yeah, what is your connection between this art work with the community? Like he said that you're choosing for Parliament. How are they connected to Parliament? Or to me, or to anybody here in the community? When, when an artist, uh, when we begin to have a dialogue with the artist, then they they present a proposal, a proposal of, of work that they uh, Um, are, are thinking to to have a relationship to the to the sites, so they're responding um, to to the sites in in their vocabulary. How do you choose what the site, the specific site? Are the sites chosen first, or or there's the piece, and then you say, oh. I have looked through the community and oh, if that'll go best here. How do, how do you do that? We have about 10 sites that we regularly program because our our jurisdiction is about um, five, five miles. And there are about uh, 10 that have been successfully used. And we, we tend to be on hardscapes. We don't tend to exhibit within the malls because of the, the planting right. and also people can't really access them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then the artist will will look at the 
available sites and then and then together we figure out what gets exhibited where and um we're going to just take one more question sure so it's not a question I, i'm familiar with the broadway model i used to deal with them and if michael palmer is still there his mother and i were yes you remember uh michael's mother uh and yvonne said it. the three of us had worked with broadway mall association so uh, yes, we, we even received a grant from the Broadway Mall Association to put up Christmas tree lights on the on the malls during uh, Christmas time. So basically, okay, I'm trying to be you know polite here. Um, the Broadway Mall Association works with artists who are represented by a gallery, so therefore the cost can be taken care of because it is expensive presented to public art. So this is how they deal with it. They get an uh, artist who's affiliated with the gallery. I told no, Sean so like, well in most, in most right. And yeah. so therefore, it can be realized because they're doing several pieces. Um, the problem is the response. Uh, Broadway Mall Association has, you know, uh, they're not that flexible, but maybe now because of technology, uh, to make it more as Juan was bringing up, how do you make it where it connects to the people in the community? Nowadays, you can respond to an exhibition and that can be done digitally. So you can actually do an open call to West Harlem artists, if you like, to have them respond to what he is presenting. You could do it digitally, make it available, have QR codes on the signage and boom, you just got diversity, just like that. You're also developing um, school curriculum that can be uh, disseminated through all the schools. But see, you have to understand what he is saying. No, I do. What he's saying is that it's, it's not enough diversity and the children up here are not going to respond because they're going to say, what does this man have to do with my life? So you could do that by having a digital response to his work, and that could be both visual and auditory, where you have poetry, you can have music, and now you've made it where it's relevant to people in the community. Yeah. Yeah, I have, have in the past, we did um, when audio guides were- But this won't be an audio guide, this is a total response to. So they can organize it, you don't have to do it, and cool. Just got to self diversity. Why are you hungry, right? Huh? Why are you hungry? Well, I was telling you on the floor, but we just burping on the bottom of the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm still there. Yeah. I used to send money. So, you need to upgrade. Well, okay. The one thing I I remember now, what I was going to say, there there has been an increased um, focus on on the sites that are further uptown because you know when artists come in they're they're often most interested in you know they immediately want to have their work on view across from Lincoln Center because you know of the proximity to but yeah. we have we made a concerted effort and uh, successful and so to really put the focus on um on um up to the uptown sites and in this case um it seems we're we're we've been successful in um deciding for the opening rather than to have it in the west 70s we're going to have a one one fifty seven street so one one fifty seven the time thank you are there any other questions thank okay. you so much thank, thank you. you um our next presentation is stephanie nelson dance group hi can you hear me yes great so um, Stephanie Nelson Dance Group was founded back in 2000. Um, we've been providing programming for New York City. So for the past 24 years, um, we're mainly a contemporary dance company. We have a summer dance program called Dance Italia, which is a month long program that takes place in Lucca, Italy every summer. And recently we were able to um, take over a space in Lucca in old um, car garage which we recently renovated and um, it's now, um, a, it's an open space for performing arts. Um, it's just a big open, beautiful space and it's empty for about 
15 weeks a year. And I don't know if this is relevant to this conversation because I know it's all very West Harlem focused, but um, if anybody were looking for ideas on how to support artist residencies from here to be there, we have 15 weeks where the space is empty and we're looking for funding opportunities and are open um, to any ideas that people might have on how to um, establish funding for that to bring West Harlem artists over to Italy to have an intensive um, workspace. It's mostly for movement-based artists, um, but we're open to ideas for other things as well. Um, so our work here in West Harlem, we're based in Morningside Heights. Um, we have a community partnership with um, Broadway Presbyterian Church located at 114th and Broadway. And they recently have provided us with what feels like a home in our neighborhood. Um, we've produced a series of events that we call, um, that are part of our moving memory project. So in addition to creating work, uh, original artworks, original dances under the guise of Stephanie Nelson Dance Group, we have community programs where we've worked with youth, we teach in the community. We've been doing that since we incorporated back in 2000. Um, we also work primarily with people with disabilities in collaboration with AHRC in New York City. Um, they've been a collaborating partner since 2014. Um, we provide over 100 free uh, movement classes for people with disabilities. We 60 for young adults and then another 40 sessions for seniors with disabilities as part of what we call our Moving Memory Project. So um, those are our main focuses um, here in West Harlem. Our recent events have to do with the Moving Memory Project. And we started that in 2019. Um, I made a piece called A My Name Is, and it was made in response to um, a family member being diagnosed with dementia. And so I did a deep dive to research <laughs> because all art is ultimately cathartic. Um, and it became this sort of new initiative that the company took on. Um, promoting, producing events that have to do with discussion around memory, um, creating opportunities for people to share stories. Um, what we found over, over time is that the most difficult part of, I mean, the most difficult, there are a lot of difficult parts about caring for somebody with dementia, but that people feel very isolated and alone. And um, we found that the response to the works about this um, were received as an outlet. And that was really um, exciting for us as a, as a dance company to be able to really provide an outlet in the community based off of original artwork and dance and all of that. So um, we've had a bunch of events. The last one was February 9th and that was um, called Round the Block. And it was a partnership with um, Theater Lab. And we were lucky enough to have Michael Palmamir from West Harlem Arts Alliance uh, give a little presentation about what they're doing. And so that was really exciting. Um, we had two tour guides. We had one with Sam Cavete. He's a West Harlem based um, stand up comedian and uh, theater person. Claire Leibowitz also did a tour and it featured dance. It featured um, an interactive art making session with Vicki Fremont, also located in West Harlem. Uh, Tiana Ayala is a young choreographer based in West Harlem and she taught the group some movement and then they went on the tour and they did it around the, in the streets. We had um, a West African drummer named Faro Diamande uh, and then some local businesses that shared uh, the history of their tenancy in the neighborhood. And maybe I'm talking too long, I don't know. Uh, Daria, let me know. When are you finished? I mean, I, the two things I wanna say is that I that I didn't remember is that we are a nonprofit um, and that, uh, yeah, I remember the one of the two things I wanted to say. Oh, and then we have upcoming events, one on April 5th and then at bo both at the church, one on April 5th and then another one on June 14th at Broadway Presbyterian Church. And so the best way to find out what we're doing is either to check out our website, sndancegroup.org, it's in the chat, or to follow us um, on Instagram as sndancegroup. And that's and it. If, if anyone has any song, questions. If there's a soft copy, send it to Tina and Walter. Send you some soft copies. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Stephanie? Anybody online? Hi. Um, you mentioned a program to send Harlem youth to Italy or dances to Italy. Is that correct? It is correct. So we so two things. We have a space in Italy where we would provide um, potential artist residency programs for professional older artists. 
And we have a young artist program um, for young dancers ages 15, 16, 17. And we have uh, a bunch of scholarship money left to give out. So if you know a very talented young dancer who would love to spend 15 days in Italy, um, please send them our way. Could you drop wow. your email in the chat or send it to me? I, I was just looking for information and I couldn't find any website. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my email right now in the chat, and I'll also leave. So the website for the dance program in Italy is different than my dance company, so I'm gonna send you that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Which one is that? Dance Italia. It's Dance Italia. Yeah. So that's you have like three different organization yeah i know right? it's really nuts yeah <laughs> okay did anybody help anyone is else there any high them? schools for performing arts in harlem yes yeah um, urban, urban assembly for the performing arts is... have you tried any of the high schools could you i'm sorry ma'am could you no, repeat it again um there's urban assembly for the performing arts is in west harlem Specifically. Would that be something that you might want to consider to see if anyone there's a good dancer that you might want to promote and send to Italy? Yeah, absolutely. Stephanie, are you in touch with our youth, youth education and libraries? I didn't hear the, I Say that again. Am I in touch with? Is this thing on? Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. I just didn't catch the name. Urban Youth Education and Libraries Committee. Are you are you in touch with them? No, I didn't even know about them. I'll put you in touch. Plus, you have Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, and yeah. Harlem School of the Arts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are already on our radar. Okay. What, I will you, I'm sorry. I have a question. This is Barbara Adeola. When you say okay. contemporary dance, what dance style is that? Um. <laughs> That's a really good question. For me, it's almost anything that can't be categorized as a dance form that you would know. It's kind of anything goes. Okay. Um, it's my work is mostly uh, it, it's not mostly, but it, it's based in sort of theater dance, sort of absurdity, Pina Bauschian. Um, it's postmodern. Uh, anything goes. OK, good. OK, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Stephanie. Thank you, Daria. Okay. We are moving on. That was great, by the way. <laughs> That's our inside joke. Um, our <laughs> next is Messiah Ramkissum from Youth Justice Network. Good evening, everyone. Um, Messiah, Jack, Anthony here today. We represent Youth Justice Network. I'll keep it brief because I know we are on a tight time capsule. But New Justice Network was founded 34 years ago on the school floor of Rikers Island as the first nonprofit to support 16 and 24 year olds coming out of incarceration. While it was still legal for children to be in a adult facility, it was nothing really for them when they came home. The services were more adult focused services. So we focus exclusively on young people coming home in the five boroughs, supporting them to wrap around services. We pretty much service the bridge between these young people or whatever their respective needs and wants are. We do that through a plethora of services, inclusive of, but not limited to, youth advocacy, mentorship, employment services, education, court advocacy. And we are here more importantly today because we received a small grant from the West Harlem Development Corporation, which we implemented an arts initiative called Hear Us, See Us here in the West Harlem community. A lot of times we speak for young people, but young people don't get to speak for themselves. Because this is about Hear Us, See Us, young people actually owning their identity through the mediums of photography as well as music. And I'm gonna let these gentlemen right here who work more closely with the initiative give us a little spill on exactly what's happening. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good um, evening. About a, my name is Jack Powers. I'm the director of community outreach. So I manage a team of guys that recruit young and justice involved people in all five boroughs. But um, I'm also the founder of a small photography nonprofit that trains young people to do, you know, learn how to take photos, become photojournalists, get gigs. Um, about a year and a half ago, my organization partnered with YJN and uh, seven young people in our program, our office on 120, West 125th, um, started their journey becoming photographers. And as, as you mentioned, uh, eight months later, they had a show down the Lower East Side in the gallery. 
Um, and that was May of 23. And then we connected with the West Harlem Community Foundation uh, to do something with art and music and photography. So those young photographers jumped in again and started documenting this area. Um, and they had a wonderful show right before the holidays at the Forum in Columbia, where all their work was hung up on the glass there. And it was for sale. And it sold. And people could scan a QR code. And each photographer got all the money. Wow. These people that we've known for some of them years now, some just home from Rikers Island, uh, the camera is their tool and they're gigging and they're getting jobs. One is a, a contracted photographer for the United Nations and he was shooting at the General Assembly. Uh, so anyway, that was part one of Hear Us See Us. Uh, their photos, like I said, were at the Forum in December, but now they're going over to do some music and new people in, from Manhattanville are um, getting involved with that. And that's where Anthony jumps in. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Anthony DeJesus. I'm getting the arts and rec director at YJN. And uh, so the second half of Hero See Us is gonna be a music portion where we're also gonna shoot a music video that reflects the photo and the message of Hero See Us with y'all people with We're only three weeks in, but part of the workshop is gonna be rooted in teaching on um, music technology, um, songwriting, song development, and history of music before we get into actually making the song. In the video, um, we really want to get more into the space of teaching young people about music and all the other components that could lead to other career paths in music besides just being a musical artist. Um, within that, we are going to have open mics and we're going to have guests who are going to come and talk about music business and their journeys as well to empower them on these journeys and then shoot a beautiful music video that we can showcase with the photography. And um, I hope that uh, we're, we're only three weeks in, so there's not much to talk about, but it's been excellent. And um, we also circled around, of course, mentoring. You know, myself as a muralist, I have a few murals in Harlem myself. I'm not a music uh, person per se, but I'm a side as a music guy. But um, of course, I'm entrenched in music and what it does for the arts at all angles. Um, so this is what we're bringing in the music component, and I'm excited to be launching in June our music video. Um, and I'll be sending information if you guys want to come and partake in it to see what these people have created. Well, and last but not least, if you go to youthjustice.org, that's our website. You can find the actual, uh, the actual component on the website, the gallery component, where you can purchase their works online as well. And like Jack said, all the proceeds go back to the young people. Another part he left out, every young person who participated got the opportunity to keep and own their own digital Camera, yeah, as a reason. I want to, I just want to um, make a connection uh, before we open up for questions. And I know, um, I know that you already have your, your music and your photography. Um, but uh, in terms of Hear Us, See Us, I would also like to sort of add that um, possibly writing in that. Mm -hmm. And we happen to have a gentleman who's in publishing in the room, um, he actually, uh, who was that, Danny Simmons? He published Danny Simmons' first, uh, oh, first book. He's, he's, and he's looking to, um, he's not presenting tonight, um, John McGregor, but, uh, but he is uh, looking to open a, um, a bookstore in Harlem, a general interest bookstore in Harlem. So I really would like for you all to connect you all, because that might be a good outlet for the kids as well, you know, writing books. Um, were there any questions? Where do you get your referrals? Uh, good, good question. So we have, yeah, you know, yeah, technically, that's, uh, that's, that's my, my paid responsibility at Youth Justice Network. Um, as Messiah mentioned, we were founded on the floor, the school floor of Rikers Island. So all of us have worked there. I was an advocate there for years, and that used to be our only source. We'd have a team that would go in and meet young people that got there within their first 24 to 48 hours of you know getting incarcerated and being there. We'd have an advocate meet them there and, and get in touch, right? And then we'd work with them, and eventually when they got home, they'd come to our offices. During the pandemic, that slowed down because DOC kicked a lot of us out, community organizations. Yeah, it's yeah. only CEOs and people that are incarcerated here. You're not allowed. So that's when we shifted and adjusted, shifted gears, and created this mobile initiative in the community. It's a converted bus, and we park in a different neighborhood every single day across the five boroughs. Um, we set up in areas where we know that young people are targeted for incarceration. We've worked anywhere from here, right from Manhattanville to Grant, all across 125th. 
in every single borough from Mother Gaston and Brownville to Stapleton and you know Staten Island to Soundview and the Bronx. Yeah, each day of the week, the bus goes to a different borough, and like you said, yeah. they focus on neighborhoods that most of you come home to. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of young people don't leave their neighborhoods for safety reasons, mm -hmm. right? A lot of them don't leave their neighborhoods because they just came home and the structure just wasn't there, so they're not really thinking about it. It's various reasons. So what this allows us to do is bring all the resources we offer, the employment, the education, everything to break that cycle, we now bring to the doorstep of the community. So now we have not just the young people, but also the family members, right? The mothers, the uncles, the fathers said, hey, I'm coming back next Wednesday. I got a young man. I got a grandson who needs that support. So we now bring the doorstep. And we still have a team that's on right that we've been doing our outreach in the jails. Uh, we also get a lot of referrals to court advocacy aspect of it too, the attorneys. Uh, we also have a court advocacy team that works exclusively in the courts every day to expedite return home to the young people who are facing with certain charges. How old is your organization? 34 years old. Uh, next year is our 35 year anniversary. Wow. And we, we were formerly known as Friends of Island Academy. When we were just on Rikers Island during the pandemic, we rebranded because continuing to be associated with Rikers Island, we determined. It's just now we are. The name is misleading, yeah. but, but just, to, just to become more specific, I know times of the essence, the school was called Island Academy, and that's how we became yeah. Friends of Island Academy, because the principal of the school saw this cycle and was the first, the sister was the first one to really branch out and create a nonprofit to support this issue with young people coming home. Please have the youth young men especially yeah. any of the visual artists um, apply to um, submit their artwork for um, our next Absolutely. showcase. Yes, for sure. Yes. Were well, there any questions uh, um, from the online, from our virtual attendees? Any questions? Okay. Thank you so much. I'll their work. Feel free to take Thank you so much. Yes. You, uh, do you have partnership or dialogue with the Art for Justice? No, no, no. Uh, I, 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 we should. <laughs> Please do you know about that, Bert? I no, 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 I don't know. But we know. Oh, 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 okay. And this is why you're comfortable. I was right here at Block Grand Project, so it makes sense. Drop by any time. Thank you so much. Um, now we're moving on to Harlem Late Night Jazz, Cold and Pippin. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to be here. I, I always learn something. And uh, always, you always bring something too. We can't wait <laughs> thank to you. <laughs> but but it, it's uplifting because you don't always know uh, the kinds of people and the kinds of work that's going on in the neighborhood. So thank you for that. Uh, maybe I should just start with a little bit about us, and then I have some new announcements that we're excited about. Um, Harlem Lake, but I apologize for it being me, because C. Kelly Wright, who is our artistic director, uh, she's in a play right now. So oh, she no. can't be here, and I'm sure she'd probably do a better job of, of, of giving you this information. But uh, we're eight years old. Uh, we book over a thousand uh, musician gigs all in Harlem during that period. I, I appreciated the comment that the gentleman made about the artist. Uh, our, our objective is uh, music preservation in Harlem, maintaining the musical legacy here, keeping the music alive. And we think there's three parts to that. And one of the parts, of course, is the artist. And the best way to help an artist is to give an artist gigs. Absolutely. So really focused. We knew that that was important. The other thing we knew is venues. Harlem venues are critical. We got started because St. Nick's Pub closed. It was an emotional reaction to that. And since then, Harlem has been through a lot. Uh, but we know supporting venues and uh, is, is a focus. And then finally, pass it on to future generations. And uh, so I know Daria knows some stuff that we're doing on the education side uh, with the jazz history tree, but that's what our organization is is all about. So um, go to Harlem, Nate. Oh, I should say this before I make the new announcement. We currently have music 
Um, well, as of now, six of the seven days in Harlem venues, we have music, jazz, soul, blues, uh, a variety, uh, and a variety of venues. And if you go to our website, um, harlemlatenightjazz.org, you'll see our calendar. And we're proud of the calendar. I won't go through it now. I only got seven minutes. But go to our calendar. We're we're six of seven nights. We're proud of that. Uh, now, finally, there are some new um, items that I would like to talk about. Uh, we're very proud that uh, going into this year, well, first thing I should say is that we've been in 18 Harlem venues, and many of them are in West Harlem. Uh, you know, I, I I could put just to name a few, the Cotton Club, Savannah, Hamilton, Bird in Hand, Dinosaur Barbecue. Those are a few that I could think of. And, um, uh, and of course, the Uptown Night Market, the Uptown Night Market, which takes place uh, there. So let me get into what's new. What's new uh, is coming up in April. We're having our second annual Harlem Jazz Club Revival. We're very excited about it. There will be over 15 venues all in Harlem participating in this. We It's a 10-day jazz festival. There will be over 60 events and well over 100 artists. And that's coming up April 12th through April 21st. Uh, we've sent out some 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 save the dates. Uh, we did this last year, and we were shocked that we got 18 venues to participate. We didn't even know there were 18 venues. So uh, the objective of this is to make Harlem a destination. They have the Winter Jazz Fest, which is successful now downtown. Uh, we we do this twice a year and with April, we'll do it again in October. And over that period, that 10 day period, our objective is to make Harlem a music destination, make it, it will be annual events. And we're excited about it. You'll start seeing some of the marketing very soon. We book Grammy award winners that wanna come and play uh, and, be, and be a part of this uh, and associated with that. The historic Minton's Playhouse is now under new owners. There are new owners that have taken over Minton's a couple of months ago. They're dynamic uh, entrepreneurs that understand the history of Minton's and they've committed to returning Minton's Playhouse. If you don't know, that's a national landmark it were, where Bebop was born. We're now curating music there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the Historic Mentions Playhouse, evening sets, and for those jazz aficionados, late night jams, 11 to 3 a.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And why are those important? Actually, that's when all that great music was created at Minton's. Bebop, that's where how it was created. But that's when the masters can come up and connect with the young lions coming in. That's when the new music has been, how it's created. Harlem, which has always been the center of that, has been lacking that. So we're very proud to be back, not only doing that, but in a historic venue like Minton's Playhouse, where everybody's played. Uh, and then finally, the Uptown Night Market. Uh, we will be curating the music uh, for the Uptown Night Market again this year. There'll be eight events, uh, the second Thursday of the month starting in April. And if you're not familiar with the Uptown Night Market, it's a foodie music event, tracks Five to 7,000 people uh, every event. And uh, music is, of course, uh, is, is, is how we contribute. And the only one other thing, <laughs> while they are not 
in CB9. We support the uh, New Amsterdam Music Association, which is the oldest association in the United States uh, for black musicians. And many musicians from West Harlem play there. By the way, there are a lot of musicians who live in West Harlem. Um, young musicians, many of whom we're learning. We didn't even know they existed. But the New Amsterdam Mu Music Association was founded in 1905. Early members, the likes of James Reese Europe and Hubie Blake and Fats Waller. It's been in its current building over 100 years. And every Wednesday, we have a program where we bring masters and young lions together. So, um, I, I, can you I, take I, some questions? Seven minutes, uh, <laughs> can you take some questions? Yes, please. What, does anybody have any questions for Harlem Late Night Jazz? Hi, uh, this, um, this is Barbara ahead. Adeola. I'm jumping in because it's 819. Um, he already mentioned two of my favorite places. That's Minton's. I'm glad you connected with them. Um, those brothers are really on point. And uh, of course, New Amsterdam Music Association. My question is, it might be too late for April, but I know of a spot that's going to be opening up. They've done some soft op openings. They're on 145th between Convent and Amsterdam. And this is right in their pocket of what they'd like to see happen in Harlem. Um, so I would love to introduce you to the owners and maybe talk about adding their venue for October if it's too late for April, because they're going to open in the summer, so April might be too soon anyway. Um, secondly, that same location has uh, is open to some art um, exhibition as well. So, but I don't want to say too much about the art side, but I know definitely the music side is right in their pocket. So, Barbara, yeah, the information that's in the chat. Yes, I'm Black American Dance Heritage, Barbara Ade Barbara Adeola. Please put it in the chat. It's in there already. I'm in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me just say, yes, uh, uh, we definitely would be interested in, in meeting with them. And uh, if they could be part of the revival, either in April or October, I know the place because uh, I live not very far from it. I'm on Convent and 148. It's between uh okay. Convent and Afternoon and Amsterdam. It's, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful brownstone. Beautiful. Oh, my so, gosh. Who was there? They had music there, I don't know, how many years ago? 15 years ago? I mean, I don't know. 20 I years don't ago? know, but this they yeah. recently, I could, did a soft opening for Valentine's Day with Lindy Hop and Swing. And they. it's almost like the sort of a speakeasy house, uh, what you call rent party vibe. If yeah, you no, it's a beautiful yeah. spot. And they yeah. got the second floor and the third yes. floor. Yes, yes. So they, yeah. they have a lot of plans. Yeah. Okay. In the interest of time, I'm going yeah, to ask yeah, you to connect thank you. online, please. Yes. Um, yeah. thank but you. thank you so much for that, Barbara. I love that collaboration. Did anybody else have any questions, comments for um, late Harlem Late Night Jazz? Comment. They um, featured them on Here and Now last Sunday on um, Channel Seven. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Um, yeah. Let me just Amen. say a little bit about Minton's Playhouse. We don't. We, don't, we already don't have time. We don't have time. And okay. they're not in our district. So, and not to say we do. We we do cross pollinate. We we've, we've had that said um, several times tonight, and that is one of the things that we are really trying to do. Um, and that is also a thing that Harlem Arts Alliance is um, really pushing for, bringing all of the, specifically the community boards in order to bring the arts community and the community in general. Harlem is one community. It's not three yes. or four. It's one community. And, and we are moving in such a way. Um, so that I'm, I'm glad that it's actually been said. Um, and I'm glad that everybody's on that same page. Uh, thank you so much, Dakota. Uh, uh, thank you. As always, I'm going to come out to your um, tell your tell your um, your tree, your jazz tree um, website, so that people can check that out. Oh as well. yes, Just please, really please, quickly. please, please go to jazzhistorytree.com. You'll see a history of the music going back before 1619 to today. There are about a hundred videos loaded and 34. Genres of music are, are covered 
it's all the same music. Each generation just adds a branch. And that, all that tree says. Uh, it's been used by some professors from, from university all the way down to elementary school. And we encourage it. It's free for everyone. Uh, I'm working on adding some enhancements that I won't talk about now. And thank you. Thank you. Um, was there any any other um, WHDC grantees who um, need to get your presentation in before this window closes? Yes, I do. Tijani. Tijani, uh, what is your what is your organization again? USA Mali Charitable Association. Okay, go ahead. Uh, sorry, what was that? Yes. US. USA, USA Mali Charitable, Charitable Association. Association. Okay. Go USA ahead. Business and Mandingo Cultural Center. Start the presentation. So we focus on uh, West African culture, like introducing New Yorkers to West African culture, especially young New Yorkers. So we have programs with uh, the city's public schools where we have uh, African dance classes. And for the last five years, we've been partner partnering with uh, Public School 125 in Harlem, where we have uh, classes. We teach like from third grade to sixth grade how to dance African dance and how to sing some African songs. We also have uh, storytelling programs with that school. So, and since three, year, three years ago, we try to embrace cultural diversity because we've been encouraged by the city's Department of Cultural Affairs to promote inclusivity and cultural diversity. So we, for example, last year, we had an Indian program alongside the West African dance program. So it's like a four or five months classes. And at the end of the year, like in May, we will have a, a culminating event where students will showcase what you have learned in front of their parents and their invitees. So we, at the beginning, we were focusing on uh, American of African descent. But currently, we, the non-Africans are the majority of the participants, like a white and a Latino student constitute the majority of the, the participants, which is, to my view, a good thing. So like, like I say, every May, we will have a culminating event with, with that school. And it's basically to promote West African dance in New York. Thank you. Were there any questions for Tijiani? Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Everyone who is a, um, a grantee, please email us your uh, form tonight. The sooner the better, and then we can get it back to you. Um, and just, I know we, I know we are late, but you and brought up something that's Yes. I'm sorry, does that apply to us when you said email a form? Yes. Are you, you a grantee? WHDC. Yes. yes, yes. Get it from Joanna. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll and talk I might maybe, have maybe our communication team has it already. I'll, I'll make sure. Thank okay. You. We have to come uh, to us. Ewan, if you can uh, just Perfect. really quickly speak on the bill, because I, I think it's a good time to talk about it. We're not going to um, stay too long, yeah. but I just want you to be able to mention it. Right, right. And what I'll do is, I'll um, send you, you know, um, copies of the bill and what we are thinking about it. Um, but quickly, uh, the reason, uh, you know, for me being here tonight really is to bring your attention to the to the pending legis legislative bill in Albany and to request a letter of support in launching an advocacy campaign to get the bill moving again before the end of uh, this legislative session. What is the bill? This bill is A2563A, which calls for developing guidelines and criteria 
criteria for um, designation of um, arts and culture districts in New York State. It was introduced by Senator Serrano in 2026 and have gone through a number of rewrites over the years. But in the last couple of years, um, it has been passed by the Senate more than once, straight through to a full vote. And, and with the Assembly um, once a year and a half, both, both um, um, the Assembly and the Senate were in sync. And it was pushed to, to the House for a full vote, but it was never called up by the Speaker. So this year, um, if you... So, you know, every time a bill fails to be called up uh, within a legislative session, um, it has to start all over again, the next legislative session. And there's got to be political will, you know, to to activate that process again. So so we're here um, this legislative session with um, Harlem One Stop and our uh, Harlem Cultural Collaborative have been advocating for this bill since 2016 when Serrano first came to a legislative brief. And um, what we want to do, um, and we um, we had a legislative brief again last month, and we were advised to to launch a campaign, get support for it, get signatures as far. Um, reaching as possible, which mean upstate and downstate, and begin the process if we want to see it move this legislative session. So uh, the bill is not a, a, a funded bill, but what it is, as I said, it creates guidelines for the designation. And what it, it, what it does is offers or opens opportunity for funding um, as, and assistance from the Council of the Arts and, and um, ESD, Empire State Development, um, for, um, uh, and, uh, for grants and marketing and tourism initiatives. And, um, and basically, it's an economic development bill. And, um, is, there, Ewan, is there a deadline on this? Well, the legislative session ends in um, June. Okay. So this is something that we would definitely need to collaborate with our Economic Development Committee on. Yes. Um, so um, I plan on attending that meeting as well. I had brought it up to, to Victor several months ago, but um, since um, we were advised, you know, to, to really become actively involved in advocating for this bill, um, um, then, uh, you know, that's the reason we're, we're doing this push. I don't know if we'll succeed this year, but at least we can begin to build awareness and momentum in terms of signatures. Um, Thank you. Know, you. Um, you said Harlem is one community, which it is, but we all know that East Harlem and West Harlem are the stepchild. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We were trying to bring it all together, and we appreciate all your work on you. You are always on the on the front lines for this. So thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, I'm going to contact you offline. Yeah, that would be great. And, and in the meantime, I will send you, you know, the, the backup information on the bill. Okay. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Um, okay. So we're moving on to our old business. Is there any old business? Okay, that's fine. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, and thank you. Um, new business. Uh, this is just really quick. I just want to bring this up. I mentioned it before, and I um, I wanted to just sort of get the conversation going. Um, and this is arts and culture collaboration. Um, and it, And not only... And it's basically about arts and culture collaboration with um, it's arts and culture collaboration with our cannabis task force. And because of uh, the possibilities of, you know, how how, you know, to be honest, cannabis and arts, and this is a grown folks conversation, 
but you know, cannabis and the arts, there has been collaboration in the past. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's not, it's not all about the using of the cannabis. There are a lot of economic opportunities in this as well. And, you know, whether it be events or, or whatever to uh, connect artists with uh, these new opportunities in the legal cannabis industry. I also wanted to bring up um, my hope that we can collaborate with our youth education and libraries as well, because that's something that we've never done. And this is, this is for the members of our committee. Um, to just get your minds going and thinking about it is something I'm going to bring up uh, next month and, and, you know, so that we can start just again, collaborating and, and making so that it's not just in a box. There, there are so many things artists, uh, artists do art. But artists, again, can also, artists also have to make money. And there's a whole industry, a new industry um, that needs to be touched. There are, there's a whole bunch of stuff. We have a bunch of people who um, presented to, tonight who are youth-based organizations with the arts. And we, people come and collaborate with each other, but as a committee, we don't ever really discuss it. So I'd like to get the, the conversation going. And unless anybody has anything to say about that right now, questions, comments? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that right there. I did Barbara. have a comment real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just, um, there's an office of cannabis management that I had, I went to a, a local meeting on uh, last week um, a lot of interesting information. I think they were very open and resourceful. So I'd like to share that with you. I'm going to take a, maybe a screenshot of the business card and post it somehow, but yeah. Yeah, we have, we're, we're in touch with them with our, our cannabis task force. Thank you very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, and in the absence of anything else, we just need a motion to adjourn. Did you all business? Yes. Is there a motion to adjourn? There is. Yes, there is. Oh, That's okay here. <laughs> it has been. So who moved and who seconded it? So we're clear. And she did. Okay. Walter and Tina. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Please. Oh, good night, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,